Melt Banana is about to make Fetch happen. It's the Going Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. <laughs> Muse, how you doing? Ooh, well, let's see. <laughs> I, I am doing, doing great. Oh, feeling some type of weight. <laughs> God damn. You fucking, you got me with that one. <laughs> no, RC, I'm doing very well. And uh, I know the schedule with the podcast lately has been kind of um, sketch, if I could rhyme with that mm. lately, with uh, me being a little delayed and getting the episodes up and the the every other week recording schedule but you know uh, we're human beings motherfuckers ain't perfect <laughs> it, it gets up eventually but the point I, the reason i bring that up uh is because we haven't recorded since but i can proudly report to the off goers out there that i attended my first pride event look at since you. our last episode yup baby's first pride i couldn't uh i couldn't wait to tell y'all couldn't contain that, your excitement uh, yeah, yeah, you know, um, I, I do want to tell everybody that it's probably as overrated as oh. you think it is, <laughs> but... It's just it's just a parade, but gay people are allowed. <laughs> I mean, pride is what you make it. I didn't go to the parade. It, it, it was a two-day event. The parade was on Sunday. We did not, we did not stay for that. We went on Saturday, mm. and Saturday is just... You're walking up and down this closed off street, checking out vendors who are like 90% mega corporations just trying oh. to sell you rainbow capitalism. Uh, you know how it goes. Yeah. But the big attraction is the sights and the sounds. You get to see other queer people the walking people. around being themselves. Yeah. If you're a people watcher, this is, you know, the spot for you. And there's always music playing somewhere. So, yeah, uh, we were able to go as a little group. So we had fun. I don't think you need to do it every year is is the thing. Mm. Um, unless there's like an artist performing in one or see or something. But I, I recommend uh, every queer person try to go to at least a pride at yeah, some it's point. It's a queer mecca of sorts. It's a <laughs> Just to kind of get a feel for it, you know? <laughs> gotta know what's happening. You gotta say you've at least been to one to kind of know what it's about and uh, mm. at least be on the in jokes with everybody else. Mm-hmm. You've got a couple things that uh, you that well one thing you were bringing to the table um, that oh. we can get to first <laughs> is everyone remembers because it went over so well <laughs> the the Russ Meyer movie trailer that you brought to our attention <laughs> a couple episodes back the what was it called Beyond the Valley of, of the, the Dolls or <laughs> the Ultra Vixens that's right. Yeah, I got it confused with the other thing we watched or talked about, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls or whatever, which is also, I think, a Russ Meyer film. The movie you've got this week is a G-rated affair. I think. I think purely by nature of the fact that, you know, G-rated just meant movies that weren't, like, super intense back in the 70s, but, you know. <laughs> mm, mm, okay. Oh, uh, but yeah, I got, I got, got, you. got a trailer for you. Go, 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 uh, give, give it a watch. Yeah, for the Doberman Gang. Ma Barker enters the bank, crosses to the security guard, the only one they've got. Now she'll station herself so that she can cover him. Clyde enters the bank, covers the rear. I have the seen this trailer. Holy shit, guns. yeah. Nobody gets oh, you have? Without dealing with Clyde. Not in a long time. I don't remember everything about it. Bonnie okay, okay. In, crosses over there and takes care of the bank officials at their desks. Pretty boy Floyd comes to this window gets up on the counter and deals with everybody at that end of the room. Babyface Nelson comes to this window and does the same thing with everybody. I love that they have pictures of people. Yeah, they put in the trouble to like print that out. You you wouldn't have like a model of the bank there. (laughs) Is in that bank during the robbery. Oh, that's right. right. Everyone's got their pieces. Oh, man can't even finish sipping his tea. Did you see that? <laughs> he was still in a mouthful of something no. when he took a final sip of coffee. <laughs> that was so intense to me. Like, he just fucking can't. Like, oh, shit, we got to go now. He's on the move. Oh. Very <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 expected. <laughs> I fucking love it. Uh, oh, God. Uh-oh! <laughs> That's the dog delivering the note! <laughs> <laughs> the 
people's faces. <laughs> what the fuck? Why does that one person have a dog Man. in the bank? Six yeah. Doberman Finches trained to commit the most and incredible the narrator. ever conceived. <laughs> Six savage Dobies with a thirst for Dobies. <laughs> that leaves banks bone dry. The Doberman Gang. <laughs> baby face. Bone dry. Ma Barker. Pretty boy Floyd. Ma Barker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> High take limit to their hideout. Who says you can't teach a new dog old tricks? Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 no. oh, no. The bulldog just bumping into the thing. Oh, it can't catch him. Gets in their way. See the Doberman gang bite the long arm of the law. Still frame of the barking dog face. Yay! <laughs> See the Doberman gang bite the long arm of the law. Oh, and they bit a fucking cop's arm, so it's true. <laughs> It's so perfect. Oh, I <laughs> love 70s it. These 70s trailers. Oh, man. That's and, fucking great. Like, just the halfway through narrator with all of the puns. Like, how, how that kicks things into high gear. Where at first he's like, what the hell's going on? Oh, my God. It's, oh, my God. And then, wait, we got to get these dog puns at you. <laughs> Leaves Banks bone dry. <laughs> What's great is a movie like this, it cost $100,000 to make. Pretty cheap. It brought in $5 million. Damn. Th that's a crazy return yeah, on yeah. this. Yeah, from practical effects back in the day. Look at that. The Daring Dobermans in 1973. The Amazing Dobermans in 1976. Serious? You're and kidding. Alex and the Doberman Gang in 1980. There were four <laughs> movies total. <laughs> At least two generations of dog. <laughs> That's incredible. I love that there's four movies of bank robbing dogs. That's, a, that's amazing. After the fourth time, they're like, all right, we got to start going digital. We can't just let this keep happening. <laughs> And unfortunately, there is no Wikipedia article for the 1981, only for uh. the first three. But the goddamn posters are so fucking good. The Amazing Dobermans, retitled Lucky for its 1978 release, what? is a 1976 American crime comedy film starring Fred Astaire. <laughs> Fred Astaire. That's a name I wasn't expecting to hear. What the fuck is he doing here? <laughs> Dancing with the dogs. What's happening? <laughs> How? How old? <laughs> yeah, my 76. What? He was in his 70s when he was in this. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> oh, okay. I got another name for that ass, RC. What? Oh, no. Barbara Eden of I Dream a Genie fame. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy <laughs> 70... shit. This might be the one to watch, folks. Yeah, we got all the uh, 70s legacy acts, you know, coming through. <laughs> I just love that, like, that little part of the beginning with the guy sipping the tea where it's just like, yeah, he's eating food. <laughs> it's like he's barely got time to enjoy it. Like, they just got word, like, oh, fuck, we got to go right now. And he's like, oh, shit. And he, like, he takes a sip. Half of the fucking drink leaves the fucking cup. Yeah. <laughs> like, I guess they just need to show, oh, man, we, you know, they're like, this scene's got to look like they're on the fucking move. <laughs> See, just... he... Here's the yeah. great thing about the trailer that can only be achieved by the trailer. The way they're setting it up is, you know, it's the big reveal that, sure. oh, they're dogs. Yeah, right. And, and you're watching it, and you're seeing all these people getting their guns ready, and the guy, and you assume that those are the people who are going to be carrying out yeah. the, the robbery. But if you're going to see the movie... Right. You've seen the trailer, you've seen the poster, that shock... All that buildup in that scene, I hope that scene isn't in the movie. Yeah, that's... <laughs> like, that's got to be the teaser trailer of the scene that they filmed specifically for the trailer that isn't actually in the movie, because... <laughs> and the 70s while... you couldn't remember, you know, because... <laughs> that's true, it's been a while, so maybe you don't remember. I was reminded recently about the teaser trailer for Spider-Man, the original uh, 2001 Spider-Man. Oh, let me go take a look. They, they made a scene... Sp well, actually, I want you to see it. Twin Towers teaser trailer? It gives it right away in the goddamn title. W watch it anyway. Oh, I'm seeing in the YouTube uh, where you should see... <laughs> where you should skip to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I remember this. Yeah. Uh-huh. The, 
the um what was it? The helicopter between the two towers, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's got to suck so bad. You know, they put so much time and money into that. <laughs> oh, it's such a reveal shot. <laughs> it's such a great reveal. <laughs> it pulls away all dramatic and it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <The f> <laughs> You made that noise exactly when it did it. <laughs> oh my god, how did you know? That's the fucking, oh, guys, the turn to the camera, you know this was the movie of the summer. <laughs> and they, yeah, they had to fucking, if that, was, if that was in the movie, they had to take it out. Because yeah, Man. I mean, this came out in 2002, so. That sucks. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, yeah, no one's going to want to see that. <laughs> So every, everybody who saw the, tr the the teaser had to have thought, well, I know that ain't going to be in it. Like, I know one scene is going to be out. Dude, imagine the, the kids who, you know, don't really pay attention to the news, right? They're like, why the fuck did they cut out the part with the, uh, <laughs> with the two towers? What, what kind of shit is that? <laughs> Someone living out in the Midwest may not be as aware. <laughs> I'm waiting for this damn movie for months. <laughs> the dog with the note who gives it to the teller, and then just stays there with his paws on the counter just looking at her like, go ahead, read it. <laughs> That's just great. You know what's it. next. <laughs> uh, oh, do what the dog says. Shit. <laughs> but uh, the other thing you mentioned, and I'm surprised we haven't got anyone calling us out on this, because if you've been following our podcast for any length of time, mm. Uh, you probably know that every year we make it a point to watch and rank the XXL freshman ciphers. And uh, this year we didn't do that. <laughs> and uh, I was reminded of it very recently. I think only a couple weeks ago when you asked me if I wanted to watch them and they weren't all out yet. So I was like, well, let's give it a minute. And then a week turned into like three weeks. Yeah, because that's how we and, do things. Uh, <laughs> and it kind of feels a little silly to do it now. Oh, we're the Simpsons. We're, we're the double XL cipher ain't over till we say it's over. We say it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, not but, much to uh, say, though. <laughs> no, not really. But I will say, RC, and I have a feeling, because I only watched one of the videos. Mm. I don't know how many there are. I imagine there's only two. The, yeah, there's only two. There's ten of them, Okay. but six of them in one video, and only four on the other. And it's just like, I, you could have put one in the other. I just don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I was confused about that. I watched the video with the six in it. I did uh, not watch the other four, so I'm sorry, everybody. You, you got 60% of it, so... Yeah. I got 60%. And I gotta say... I actually kind of liked everybody that was in that video. Oh, wow. Look at you. Uh, I didn't really have a problem with nice any of Nice girl it. muse over here. <laughs> the, the only problem I had was how little time they gave, um, what was her name? Man, T Tia Corinne? Woo! Tia Corinne? Yeah! Oh. I was like, what the fuck? I felt so robbed. Fucking Pippi Longstockings over here was fucking killing it. And then, oh, who, but, but, oh, oh, stand back, uh, uh, you know, uh, Tia Corinne. No, 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 you can't stay on too long, because fucking whoever the hell it was with the, uh, with the, ha the chalk hairline, he's got to spit for an extra fucking minute and then do a dance, and it's like, what, what, what's happening? Why does this guy get more time? What, why are we doing this? <laughs> I liked his dance. I thought he was No, it wasn't, okay. it wasn't a bad dance. I, I, I will say it wasn't a bad dance. I, I like his wish, little dance he did I kind of wish he had just been like, and hey, guys, here's some cool TikTok dances to do. <laughs> like, And then just left it at that, you know? <laughs> I like when the people bring the personality to it. Like, like uh, Tia Corinne had this incredible makeup look where mm -hmm. the makeup went outwards past her face into her hair. It was crazy. That looked incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, everyone there had a very interesting look, which which I appreciated. Um, I think the only person that kind of underwhelmed me was the first guy who went for like two fucking minutes. Who was the first one? His name had a number in it. Oh, Rob Forty Nine. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really. It's just kind of nothing. Like him. Yeah. I thought Lil Tyler and Tila Corinne were the best of that video, honestly. 
Yeah, yeah, I liked him too. No, it, it like it, it wasn't like he was like amazingly spinning, but it's like it's one of those things where it's like if you have enough charisma, if you got enough riz, you know what I'm saying, and you're saying just the right thing at just the right moment, yep. you make it work. And he did that thing where it's like you can hear his normal voice and then switch it into that little like voice where it's a little mm-hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like okay, he knows what his strengths are. He's playing with his style and driving it like that. You know what I'm saying? So I can't get too mad at it. Everyone else, I was just left going like. You know, I always try to do that thing where I'm like, do I actually care about them after they just said what they said? And I was just like, no, nah. yeah. but four out of six was just like, I, I just wasn't really like, you know, Sleazy World, Go, Rob 49. Yeah, it, it, they just weren't. It, it, you could if you told me one name was the other. I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, Now, going into the second video, even more disappointing. <laughs> Because, uh, so I shouldn't even really waste my time with it. Yeah, no. I, the first guy was all right. I think it was finesse two times. And then real Boston Richie came in and he said some line about like, oh man, I'm so freaky. I want to fuck my cousin. And I was like, uh. uh. Oh no. <laughs> he just casually dropped that line. I'm like, uh. Uh, well, okay, letting the uh, you know porn hub leak into the uh, XL double XL freestyle. He's also Rudy Giuliani shit. <laughs> um, but the only person who really fucking showed out was Lola Brooke, and I. I, I had now, a feeling you were gonna say that. Now I'll even say this much: like it was weird because it felt like half the shit she was saying didn't rhyme. <laughs> But it was just delivered with such fucking flair and style. It was like one of those things where it was just like, you know what? You didn't even do that great, but you had so much style. I didn't even care. Guys, this is what you're supposed to do. Like, even if you're not doing well, you need to bring so much fucking flame to it that it's just like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because if you just listen, like, if you just go to her uh, part and just listen for a couple of, first of all, her just fucking yeah. uh, uh, style is just fucking incredible. But then just the way she's saying the bar is just so fucking hardcore. And it's one of those things where like, I don't even know if she's saying shit, but that just felt like, uh, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> There's a very different energy the women bring mm. to the XXL freshmen than the guys. I feel like every time... You're so right! <laughs> they need to... And yeah, I don't know Fucking if they represent. feel they need to, <laughs> or if it's just, you know, their style, but they fucking put so much more energy into mm. this shit mm. than, than the dudes. Because, like, I, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard a woman step up there and, like, mumble her way through right. a freestyle. Even the ones that they're are always. Right, it, yeah, yeah, it feels s- like there's commanding it. Yeah, yeah. They're always very emotive, very animated, just throwing their whole fucking selves into it fucking Tyler you mentioned earlier like he was able to just, just fucking basically mumble his way through yeah. his shit and it was still fine yeah, yeah. but like it, it, with him it was like he was the one who's going to be fine from all of this he clearly has the most intact career before this ever happened so he doesn't uh, need to do anything you know what I mean so it's like the fact that he brought the game as well as he did was just kind of like a you know all right I'm doing a this is an exhibition match you know what I mean yeah I have not been paying attention to the rap scene in a while, honestly, so I didn't know anyone's name going into this, so this is my first time hearing all of them. Honestly, I don't think I've seen any of these guys. Uh, Lil Tyler was the only one. I, I think I maybe heard Tia Corinne, like, one or two joined, maybe Rob Ford. I think I heard a Rob 49. And I think, yeah, I know I heard a Lula, uh, Lola Brooks song, but when I when I heard her style, it was just so, and it's so funny, it, like, looking at her, because, it's like, her, she's such a, like, small person with this, like, oddly thick microphone, <laughs> and she's like, motherfucker, you better hear this shit. She's like, next level yeah. Lil' Kim with how intense she is. It's like, I don't give a fuck if I do look like I'm too small for the stage <laughs> bitch you gonna hear this you know like it was yeah, so that, like <laughs> it's that type of energy that i'm i'm pretty sure there are some uh, th- uh there's a uh, port hub category of guys out there that definitely want her to step on them <laughs> you know oh what I'm shit okay <laughs> well, some fucking sapphic bitches i don't know look <laughs> so uh, it, it, so it's one of those things where i'm like damn like i we need better male representation in these double XL ciphers. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> There's definitely complacency. I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling some complacency. I'm feeling like just being there is enough, and right. that's that's not the case. You need to bring something else. Yeah, and you know, with the ladies, it's like. Ah, fuck, you know, this is like, how many shots are you going to get? I got to prove it in front of these motherfuckers who just got to fucking sleepwalk their way through these goddamn freestyles. Mm, Oh, my God. They're like, I'm trying to get some fucking fans off this shit. (laughs) I can't wait for the year there's more women than men (laughs) in the the freestyle. Because, I mean, 
Or at least an equal, just so we can fucking uh, hear the difference. You know, we can get a full, like, oh, wow, this is what happens when you really let the ladies do something. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. (laughs) You know? I'll preface it like this. As someone who has kind of been on the outside of it lately, been kind of more on the pop side of stuff, but just as a mainstream kind of eye, all the really big, popular rappers tend to be women, I think. Right now. Like... Hmm, with the big hits, because Lotto had the, you know... Yeah, had that big hit. Lotto's the, big, fucking Ice Spice, fucking uh, Nicki still out there. Uh, a lot of Doja the big... Cat. A lot of big hits from a lot of female rappers. Uh, I'll say, just lately, like, uh, what's that song uh, with Cardi B? She, Cardi B did two features on two, like, new, new up-and-coming rappers. Like... Oh, shit, okay. Yeah, so it's like, a, okay, there's clearly some headway that's being made here. And, and you know, I, I'll Megan say just... Megan is still in the conversation. Yeah, I'll say just for me, like, I like hearing female voices because it's like, it's a switch up from, you know what I'm saying? It's it's automatically a different, like, feel. And also, you know, I'm a guy, I like female voices. I mean, come on. Like, I, I never understood those guys. Do you remember th- there was this period where, like, guys were like, I don't like hearing females rap, man. Like, what, what's that about, man? That's for, like, chicks, man. It's like, oh, yeah, you know what's not gay hearing a dude in your ear for, you know, a whole album. Not a chick, though. That, that's gay. Like, you know <laughs> I'm very much that way when it comes to K-pop. I love listening to girl groups you know, and girl hmm. singers in K-pop. I do not have time for the boys. I, you know, as you're saying that, I listen to, like, J-pop and stuff like that, you know, because I like, anime soundtracks and whatnot, and I find myself, yeah, normally gravitating to it. If it's, like, a male voice, I'm like, I just get, like, I don't even think about it. I'm just like... <laughs> it's a fucking attitude for me. I don't know what it is. Whenever a dude in a K-pop song starts singing... He always has such fuckboy energy. Like, like some I can't tell what he's saying right now. Like, dude, dude, dude. Like, shut the fuck up, man. You can, you can hear the ego in it. It's such an annoying swagger. Yeah, it's just like, ugh. I don't have any it's time the, for this it, shit. It's the, oh, this is what, you know, hip hop sounds like. So we gotta, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I gotta put a little, I gotta put a little McKee's flow up in there. <laughs> yes, Tom, every time. <laughs> And yeah, like I could listen to some BTS, but I don't oh, sure. get it as much as um, as if I could listen to like Blackpink or New Jeans. Like I'll listen to them over a BTS any fucking day for me personally. Now I will so, say BTS is the group that I do fuck with <laughs> when it comes because I find them creative. Like I, I, you know, I had to do a best of thing where I had to listen to this shit. So <laughs> you've always been flying the fucking flag for BTS whenever they come up. <laughs> Every single time I try to talk shit, you're, you're, you're the guy, <laughs> right you're the guy in that vine. Do you remember the vine where everyone... Like, Leave it's BTS just alone. A, <laughs> it's a bunch of dudes on a school bus. She is very gorgeous to me. <laughs> I haven't seen that. <laughs> Hold on. I need to find it. <laughs> the one the, with the way oh, he says nice so yeah. dirty. <laughs> Oh my god, Can we, let's just talk about this for a quick second. Just like losing shit in the internet just because you don't know how to describe what it is. <laughs> I know, especially Vines. Like, if you don't know the actual name of it, how yeah. the fuck are you going to look it up? It was just ephemeral. Like, it it might as well be pre-internet and that just didn't exist anymore. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we got two albums. And they are both um, Kofi requested albums. That's right. And if there's an album that you would like to hear us talk about in a future episode, you gotta head on over to our Kofi. That is K O dash. Wait. (laughs) Really? I got ahead of myself. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) K O dash F I dot com. No, no, I can't. I'm not gonna do it. (laughs) Yeah, what? Fucked up the I was going to do it. <laughs> ah. K O dash F I dot com slash going off. <laughs> no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> oh, it's a comfy chair. <laughs> Oh, slash going off. G O I N O F F. Uh, piece that together, figure it out. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to start with Melt Banana because why wouldn't we? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> oh, I got to get my breath. Fuck. <laughs> 
when we go on this candy colored roller coaster of an album. <laughs> Holy shit. So this was requested by Dr. Goatman, right? Hey. <laughs> of course it was. Uh, Dr. Goatman back again with Fetch by Melt Banana. Um, what a name. I like Melt Banana. I've listened to it a little bit in the past. I don't think I ever listened to, uh, to Fetch before. But here, uh, RC, is where I think this is going to be a little, uh, how dare I say, uh, one-sided. Oh. Because, um, I know you are, you're the lyrics guy, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't follow along. <laughs> oh, you and me both. <laughs> I, I was just sitting there, and I was fucking rocking out. But there was no way I was going to be able to keep up with the lyrics for one. And that's not the only time I've had that problem this episode, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> no, but it's just like listening to this. I was having a moment because I was listening to it live. Uh, you know, we do. We, we try to do like right. live listens when we can, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm listening to this album and halfway through someone says, oh, yeah, it's kind of crazy because, you know, she is speaking in English, right? And I was like, huh? huh? <laughs> I was like, are you are you kidding me? In the back of my head, I just figured that she was singing in Japanese until at one point of the song where I think I started recognizing some words and I was like, wait a minute. And I pulled up Genius and I was like, holy shit, there's lyrics for all of these. English lyrics? Uh, yeah. That I can actually read? Yeah. It's but so Darcy, I gotta tell you. Even if you're reading, <laughs> even if you have the words in front of you, the accent is so thick, it's impossible. It, it, it just sounds like Thursday night in the danger room, and it is really intense. <laughs> and, like, every track sounds like, ah, things are really intense happening, and her voice is really high and blaring. It's like, hey, listen, and I'm like, I, I, I'm trying to listen. I don't know what you're saying. I'm trying. <laughs> So, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't know if there were any lyrics that you wanted to specifically quote. Maybe not at this point. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, <laughs> oh, man. I but, love that. Wait, can I just catalog that real quick? The, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Because <laughs> I, I got that from, I believe, Ben Stiller. You, you know that, right? It, 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 you know how there's just, like, certain ways that we say things and we don't, like, pinpoint what it is, but it's like, oh, there's just, right. you know, when someone is, you know, sees something that looks really cool so they say say and we don't really know where that came from you know what i mean like but it came from somewhere but like i know specifically <laughs> that that's where that came from right the fucking um oh god what is the phrase again shit it just fell out of my head because i was thinking of the say phrase what what's the phrase i was just saying yeah okay oh uh, yeah <laughs> I'm so glad you did the delay just so I could have the enjoyment of what that was. Because, yeah, Ben Stiller doing the, uh, I think in Heavyweights, there was something where, uh, do you ever see that movie? Heavyweights? Yeah, there's a scene in that movie uh, where, and, and I remember I, I had learned recently that apparently he didn't want to be, like, promoted as being in the movie because he didn't want, he wanted to be kind of, like, a surprise and not be, like, the big name on the movie, you know, like, did you know he's there? So I remember watching that movie organically as a kid and being like, holy shit, Ben Stiller's here? <laughs> and he's, like, the camp counselor instructor who's, like, you know, is like, yeah, the, the you know, the guys at the uh, who controlled the fat camp last time, they were all nice and, you know, wanted you to go at your own pace, but no, I'm trying to see results, you know? <laughs> and so he's, like, pushing everyone, and his one part where he's just like he says something where it's like huh, yeah uh maybe we should do like that last camp and uh, you know have it be all nice huh, yeah okay <laughs> it's that sort of really incredulous like <laughs> and oh i'm remembering the other place that i've heard it jack's films the um he was doing a similar do you remember oh. that youtube channel <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he was doing a similar, like, bro dude thing. It was the bro 90X. Yeah, that's what it was. And this one part where he goes like, huh, yeah, oh, 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 uh, hey, Kevin, maybe I want to do routines the normal way and, you know, get gains just, you know, the normal cutting and fat. And he goes, huh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I've heard that from. I know it's not either of them. But it's it's that phrase, you know, it's the incredulous, huh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is that? We gotta catalog that. I'm calling it right now. We gotta catalog what that is. The yeah, okay. <laughs> if you see yeah, okay written out in text, that's how you read it. 
Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> with, with, a, with an implied dash between, yeah, okay. <laughs> if you see B-R-U-H written down. <laughs> right. Bruh. Bruh. It's just yeah. bruh. It has like, to be with the, the, the push on the beat. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way now. It's like an official pronunciation. <laughs> and it, it's like from something in particular. <laughs> Some first guy imbued it with the emotion that we are all feeling when we say that. <laughs> you know, and it's just been passed. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> That's so fascinating. I know there's so many more examples of that. If anyone <laughs> leave it in the comments, yeah. <laughs> please leave it in the comments, and we'll read it on the next episode. This is one of those examples where I wish we were, we were a fucking call-in show, right? Because, because you, you can't do the vocal inflections in a call. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, do, don't even do any context, right? Yeah, just just, <laughs> just put the word or phrase. If you know, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah, do that. Have the word or phrase in quotes, and then just put the, if you know, you know. Yeah, I, Y, and I, K, Y, I forget how to say, wait, I, yeah, Y, yeah. K, Y, K, yeah. But going back to heavyweights. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I love, by the way, that the official thumbnail for the Disney Plus stream is a big old picture of Ben Stiller giving a thumbs up. <laughs> really? So it's like, too bad, Ben. Oh. You're, you're tied to it forever now. <laughs> so, you're tied to this movie, and they're all holding a big sandwich with somebody in it. That's Yeah, horrifying. that's the poster I'm used to seeing, yeah. <laughs> of course, they're holding a big old sandwich. And from what I see here, it's the it's the picture of like all the kids together. Yeah, including Keenan, uh, what's his name, uh, from Keenan and Kel, yeah. You got Keenan Thompson and knockoff Keenan Thompson all <laughs> in the right. same picture. <laughs> It's a where are they now article on the cast of heavyweights. Mm. Now, first of all, I don't necessarily think we need uh, that. Yeah, like can we, can we not do this? Stop being like, hey guys, <laughs> life's not doing so well since the big uh, since you peaked. <laughs> you know, it's like right, leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, this movie specifically, like heavyweights came out twenty five years ago. <laughs> where is the cast of the Disney comedy now? First of all. They don't even tell you about any of the kids except for uh, Keenan Thompson. Are you serious? It's all the adults. Well, and so this fucking... article seriously thinks it needs to tell me where Jeffrey Tambor is what? now. Well, wait, what I don't need to Tim... know that. What happened with Tim Blake Nelson? <laughs> How's Ben Stiller doing? And this is the blurb for Jeffrey Tambor. Tambor is best known for his turns as George Bluth Sr. and Oscar Bluth in Arrested Development and for his Emmy Award winning performance in Transparent. Not even mentioning his performance in The Ropers, but, you know, I'll, I'll overlook that. And, and his performance is being really shitty to the woman who was on Arrested Development. <laughs> In November 2017, he left the later show after multiple accusations of sexual misconduct. Yeah. He has denied the allegations. <laughs> Thank you, U.S. Magazine, for including that. And now we know the rest of the story. <laughs> what was really funny to me is that they have, like, picture in picture, like, here's what they looked like then, here's what they look like now. <laughs> and they seriously had to do that for Kenan Thompson when he looks exactly the <laughs> same. <laughs> They did it for Ben Stiller, too. Why would I need to know where Ben, what Ben Stiller's been up to? But no, you're telling me about the people who actually were adults when the movie came out. It'd be funny if they were like, we wouldn't tell you about the children, but come on, that's perverted. They were kids. Let, let them have secret lives. Let them, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, let, let them enjoy that. Like, they're just like shaming you for looking it up. I was like, damn, I was curious. I, you led me to the article. <laughs> In, instead, you're going to tell me what Judd Apatow's been up to. U.S. Weekly. <laughs> But anyway, Melt Banana. Um, oh, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I had to go off for a second. Uh, no, it's like. I, I got to say, mm. b b again, before <laughs> we get into it, that I think it was Dr. Goatman who left a comment on the last episode about how, like, <laughs> God damn it. 10 minutes into the album review, and we haven't talked about the God album damn. yet. I was like, why do you have to be right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's why you fuckers listen, though. No, <laughs> don't even act it's like... The the, it's the name of the podcast, all right? It's the namesake. 
That's true. That's our fucking appeal. That's what sets us apart. Yeah, our fucking sure. ADHD and the inability to stay on topic. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, this pre-problem that we already had that we worked into the branding of how the show works. <laughs> It's baked right in. How do you how do you figure how, how do you fix a problem of we have an album that we got to review but we don't really have a whole lot to say about it. We need to stretch for time. You don't need to necessarily stretch for time when your brain will naturally do it for you. No. Uh, and start talking about heavyweights for 15 minutes. <laughs> And we really, and then we went off from that. I like how we had a moment. We we're like, wait, let's get back to heavyweights for a second. I fucking said anyway. Back to, <laughs> like three times. <laughs> God damn it! This goddamn show. <laughs> uh, we're doing it right now in real time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. You're composure. seeing the process play out in front of your very ears, oh, folks. Man. Uh, but anyway, back this album. It was a fun back listen. To uh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Uh, so Mel Banana, yes. Yeah, Glitchcore, J-Rock, uh, you know what I'm saying, style. Oh, my God. When the fucking Glitch shit came through, yeah. like... It's already like a hardcore punk album, very fast. Very, I'm already very, on like, board. Yeah. Face. <laughs> but then you also throw in the glitching and the looping, and the incredibly unique vocals here. Yeah. Like I said, they're so fast, they're so thick in that accent that even if I'm reading along on Genius, there's no following along. It's high pitched, but with a certain like scratch and whine to it. That's like. Puts, pushes it out, you know what I mean? Like, she doesn't get lost yes. in the instrumentation at all, you know? So, overall, I feel like this is a solid ride of an album. I feel like we can, we can both say yeah. that. Honestly, yeah. I, I want to start with the songs that I don't like, the songs that, that threw me off, all right? You know, because cause I was sure. listening to this album, all right? I'm getting, I'm six tracks in, all right? You know, I'm enjoying these almost, I don't know, barely even two <sighs> minute tracks where like, oh snap, you're killing me. Whoa, we're on this roller coaster of sickness. Oh man, I can't wait to hear what track comes next and how it's going to unfold with how dope it's going to sound. I don't know where it's going to go. Then I get to track seven, zero plus, and oh boy, I, I, is that the rating that I gave? this motherfucker because you really did this no, shit. You fucking came, you came in with the fucking like uh oh shit oh she's laying it out where are we going we're like we're laying out in the beat we're getting real like tremolo in the electric guitar where the fuck where are you going this time where are you taking me and then just the sound of a bog just slowly starts coming in just crickets and frogs and, and I'm like and I'm sitting here fucking musical dick in my hand like oh, what you just you just left me. I was only halfway done. What? What do you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck just happened? Why is this what this paid off to? Just the sound of crickets, a swamp. I don't get it. What's happening? Why? Why? Did, what do I need this for? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. Obviously. Oh, let me guess. Um, your favorite track on the album. You. <laughs> no. No. Uh, it, it wasn't. I um I didn't know why that was here either. Yeah. Um, I didn't let it affect the, my overall opinion on the album, though. Um, uh, interesting to me, where zero plus is yeah, it's, it's forty five seconds of guitars and then swamp animal noises for like two minutes. Yeah, um, for most of the track. And I'm like, what are you? What were you trying to say here? I, I didn't mind it personally. I just think its placement right in the middle of the album was kind of weird. Yeah, um, like if this was at the because, tail end, yeah, yeah. Because the whole time I knew it was going to be jarring when that song ended and the next song started because I knew it was just going to be another fast, hardcore punk song. And the last song, just straight up zero... Um, yeah. has this really cool glitching and looping, mm -hmm. but that song ended up being, like, the most accessible normie song on yeah, the whole album? Honestly, it, honestly, it's the one that I, I, I feel like, as far as, like, a normal song, it's the one that I enjoyed the least, because it felt mm. like it was trying to fit in with the time of, like, oh, okay, people like yeah. auto-tune on the voice, so I guess I gotta put auto-tune on my voice, and it kind of felt like, oh, I don't think this is you. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, like, I thought it was fine, but I guess keeping it to the very end was fine, too, so it didn't, you know, throw off the vibe too much. Yeah. But yeah, it was interesting that they had that, the, 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 the two songs that are, like, 
the two that mm-hmm. kind of take me out of it are both zero. Yeah. And uh, the other track that I didn't like as much was Red Data, Red Stage, where, mm. like, I kind of liked the little beeping that came in that gave it a little bit of character, but musically it felt so disconnected, especially compared to, like, like, it was one of those things where the album up to this point had been doing things where, like, it's been playing with the beat and doing certain things where it's like, oh, the drum comes in so, like, you know, pushing up against the beat, but you can hear how it's still working in with it, and, like, oh, so, like, I can hear them playing with stuff, but then doing it very well. So when it got to this track, it just felt so disconnected that I was just like, what? What is, huh? Uh, you know, like, where it was like, I, I'm giving you guys my trust to be able to do this right. And it feels like things aren't paying off as well in the same way that it felt like it paid yeah. off for other tracks. But uh, I felt like that was pretty much it. I don't know. I, uh, or, or was it then Red Eye? Wait, no, no. It, yeah, Red Data, Red Stage was the one that sounded disconnected. And then Red Eye was the one with the beeping noise that I, I, I thought was mm. all right. Uh, it, it was one of the lesser tracks, too, where it was like, you know, it, it's not like uh, two like the Red Data Red Stage, but it was just kind of like a it, it was one of those things where like if it weren't for the beeping noise, I don't know what would have made this track feel different from the other tracks that came before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 You do kind of run into the problem with punk albums is they do kind of tend to get a little samey after a while. Mm. The only thing that really does set them apart is like occasional vocal things that are different. Right, like, like stop start parts, you know, that was really cool. We'll still do like a, let's go, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. That, there was the part in Vertigo game where it's like, may be not. Yeah! That was cool. <laughs> that was killer. Yeah. Like the little that, start and stop there. And that was the one with the drums that were, yeah, like pounding, almost spilling off of the beat, but in a way that was like, oh, you could still hear it was still on the time, though. That one was fucking crazy. It was also the only song I quoted lyrics from the let's keep spinning with the time at the end. We'll all be dead someday. <laughs> like, shit, okay. It's like, yeah, the only thing I. Yeah, yeah the, okay. Yeah. The only thing you can ever hear is it feels like very glib lines that she says. Like, <laughs> it's like, wait, was this sad the whole time i thought you were there was at least a little bit of pepper your step because i feel like yeah there was another song too where it was i think it was lefty dog yeah run gave her run where it was like i'm still here i'm still lost on this fucking dear planet <laughs> it was like, yeah it was like uh, anything i'm catching just sounds like you are really uh, one morose motherfucker <laughs> And I like the the laser gun sound effects on Candy Gun. Uh, like, oh yeah, you couldn't First have started the album with a stronger fucking cut yeah. than Candy Gun. Honestly, I thought it was it's a got... one two uh, into the hives. <laughs> I thought that was oh my madness. god, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because like, as a perfect album opener, it starts off with these really subdued like waves crashing mm. noises, and then you just get this wall of fuzzy guitar. And then, yeah, it just comes in with the laser gun noises. And, like, this was, like, again, it gives a little taste of everything. It's, like, the lyrics on this album aren't really going to make a whole lot of sense. Maybe not pay attention to that so much. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe just fucking rock out and vibe. And that's ultimately what I ended up doing. I didn't even uh, have the genius page open for the second half of it. I'm trying to see where else I wrote lyrics. Uh, Schemes of the Tales. I wrote a... The one lyric where he says, lazy stones fall down fast. Fools start to sing about love. Yeah, that's what it is. Like, it, when I hear a lyric where it sounds like it's uh, optimistic, like, because I heard that lyric and I, it was another one of the music kind of cuts off moments. And it sounds like she was saying, uh, like, you know, something's happening while I start to sing about love. And I was like, oh, maybe she's being, like, optimistic. And then it's like, then to look up the lyrics, like, lazy stones fall down fast while fools sing about love. It's like, oh, damn, all right. <laughs> oh, hmm. And then, uh, oh yeah, the way it just speeds up at the end there is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. I uh, I bought this yesterday. Oh, ha, ha, actually, look at you. Uh, so for folks who know, that's a five yeah. for me. I give it a I give it a certain uh, four out of five for sure, for sure. Um, just one or two tracks that just kind of pulled a li- just enough where you know what i'm saying it wasn't all the way but y- you know you know what it means you know what a four means come on now <laughs> and with that we're heading over to another old friend actually one second i gotta feed my dog because oh, he's gonna be a fucking ah, nag. I can hear him. <laughs> did you <laughs> you know how like Breaks when they like are really bad and they sound like they're screaming. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's him. <laughs> 
You, you, you know what's funny? I, I just, uh, I've been dealing with this too. Like, so my uh, landlady that I, uh, that, that I live with has a cat. And every morning when she goes to the bathroom, that cat goes up to the door that is near where my uh, room is. And I just hear, meow, meow, meow. And here's the thing, this cat never meows during the rest of the day, only in the morning to be like, feed me the food. Give me the food, human. It's morning, it's food time. Give me that food. <laughs> And and it's so funny and manipulative because it's like I, I had learned recently that like cats don't meow to other cats. You know about that, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, they only do it to humans because it's like I need to get something from you. And oh, when a baby cried, you responded to that. So I'm going to sound like a baby so that you'll do as I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> like these cats are manipulative. <laughs> like what? How did they? How did they figure that out? <laughs> <laughs> been around us for centuries. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's what gets you to respond, eh? <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was funny. We were talking about parades earlier, and it's just like, it's so funny. Like, when you're a kid, parades seem so cool. It's like, all oh, this stuff's happening. And this seems weird to talk, you're just like, <sighs> all right, I'm just kind of standing here. My legs are kind of hurting. Stuff's just kind of going by. <laughs> like, can I be honest with you? I never liked parades. Right? <laughs> Not even as a I, kid. I remember being fooled at one point. I remember being fooled. <laughs> Hold on. Nev is looking at me. What, what's wrong? What about when we were watching the Macy's Day Parade and you saw people doing a dance, some acrobatic, gymnastical stuff, yeah. and then you screamed, I can do that. What? And then you did a donkey kick off the couch and said, Put me in the parade. Watching a parade on TV. Oh, oh I see. Is this a is lot what you're different. <laughs> this than is going real. to a parade and standing there. You said, "Put me in the parade." <laughs> and then I went through all the trouble of putting you in the parade, and you are so. I've been working so hard to get you in that parade, and now it's all for nothing. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't want to seem unappreciated. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ned. Oh, good job. Oh boy. Um. Okay. Um, anyway, let's get to this other album. Back with another familiar friend. It's Animal King requesting Whoa. another oh. sequel. It's Lock Session 2. Mm -hmm. Do we need to listen to Lock Session 1 <laughs> to get the... <laughs> Never mind. I, I guess it's By like... By Locksmith. <laughs> it's like video games. Uh, you don't need to go back to the first one. Uh, it's usually less good mechanics anyway. Lock Session 2 here is... A very different album. It's more of a, um, it's kind of a who's who here, because just about every song, at least most of them, yeah, yeah, have someone uh, featured on. Actually, th I think that actually just goes for the first half. I don't think there's many features on the second half now that I look at it. Certainly unexpected features, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of big recognizable names, but RC, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. Mm. I don't think anyone outshines Locksmith. <laughs> Oh, you, is that so? Oh. I don't think so. Wow. I think Locksmith is hands down the best rapper on this whole fucking album. Wait, I thought people held their own. Hold on. <laughs> I was like, every it? fucking song, like it would, it would have him at the first verse, and then someone else would have the would have like the feature verse to end the song, and I'd be sitting there going, hmm. That wasn't as good as Locksmith's. You know though. what? For the first track, I definitely agree with you. I, I will definitely give you that one with, with the with God one, one because it was so epic sounding, and his first verse was so like fitting what that was. And then when Exhibit and the other dude came in, it just kind of felt like, were you guys aware of what the hook was doing? Because I feel like this isn't really matching that. Yeah. For me, um, and I don't think this goes back to what I talked about in our album review with Adequate Emily about like, oh, the first song, you know usually gets a lower rating for me because I'm not used to the album yet. I think With God is just naturally one of the weaker cuts on the album. It's mm. For me, it's it's definitely in the bottom half, the bottom tier. Yeah. That and maybe... Oh, God. What? Yeah. Uh, knock Him Down with Chris Webby. Oh, man. Can I tell you another uh, familiar face that, you know, ain't too welcome... <laughs> Because it's just like... Was he? Who the fuck is Chris Webby? I know we've done an album of theirs before. Chemically Imbalanced or something. Oh my or God, Last yeah, Wednesday or something. 
And he's one of these YouTube oh. rappers who's like, because I'm saying the lyrics really fast, that means that it's really impressive, you know? And it's just like, but when you actually listen to what they are saying, like the, what they're materially from word to word saying, it's just like, but that's not really that impressive. So it doesn't matter that you put a whole bunch of words on it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I completely forgot. But yeah, I do vaguely recognize that name now that you mentioned that we've talked about him before. Are we not on the same page about Locksmith here? Maybe it was his voice, and it's just similar to Joyner Lucas in that, I'm really strange, so you can tell that I'm really trying very hard, because listen to how intense my voice is. But if for some reason, it pulled me off. I don't know. Like Really? It, yeah. <laughs> so it was just like, I kind of had to push through listening to the lyrics. Like, no, no, I can appreciate the lyrics. And even then, he felt like he fell, he fell into the little over-rapping, you know what I'm saying, thing for me. Oh, okay. No. I, I, oh, no. I know what you mean, <laughs> though. I I understand where you're coming from, because uh. it definitely can teeter into over-rapping, but I really... I enjoyed myself for the most part here. No, yes, yes, I did I mean, enjoy that's... myself for the most part. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I feel like I might be front-loading the negativity too much. There, there's definitely mad skill on this album, and I think for the most part he does it well. But there's just like certain parts where just more than a couple of times it just felt like a... Did you just put a whole bunch of words in? You know, when you... I think I especially feel it when someone hits like a certain, like where it feels like four bars have gone by and it feels like something really big should have hit, but all you did was just kind of use a big word that just kind of was like half of the phrase that led into the next phrase. And so like, it doesn't really feel like there was a rewarding, you know what I'm saying, couplet that happened. So it just feels like there's too much bother about trying to be so lyrical and not really thinking about how it fits into the flow of how the verse actually fit. You know what I'm saying? Like there was just a couple of times where it felt a little... Uh, okay, you're trying to overimpress me. You know what I mean? Like you might be right. I do have a lot of quotes from the album, though. So maybe as we go through and I read along to them, we can see if they were, if they weren't actually saying anything, or if there was some substance there. Yeah, it's like one of those things where it's like, like there were times where I felt like, are you trying to glitter bomb me with lyrics? You know what I'm saying? So I don't really like, but you know, you know when people do the lyric, the uh, lyrical, miracle, spiritual, the lyrical you know, miracle. Yeah, in your swimming pool. In it. What, what was that one song that I think is like the best example? Uh, Tim Dogg's Fuck Compton. Um, there was a song by this rapper that no one really remembers except for the fact that he did the diss to uh, N.W.A. Er early in the, uh, you know, oh, the East Coast has got to, you know, buck back against the West Coast and who's going to do it? Well, not the big oh. rappers who actually have a, you know, career to maintain and, you know, a reputation to uphold. Yeah, have but, something to lose. Yeah, exactly. But this guy over here, he doesn't have much of a Yeah, he'll say the fuck Compton. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, and there was one part where he was like, I'm, I'm unrealistic, uh, simplistic, and I'm casing in the ballistics. And I'm like, dude, you didn't know what that meant. That didn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Let me see if I can find it actually so I can I can give credit to this man. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, fuck Compton. Because it's one of those things where it's like that had nothing to do with anything. You were just trying to be like, oh, I'm more lyrical than those guys on the West Coast, but that didn't say anything, so it didn't matter. <laughs> oh. What is it? Oh yeah. Oh, it was. It was. It was. Uh, well, like one of the words was what I said. What I said. But I find it hilarious because it's like immediately that's an insult. He says, uh, you know, uh, uh Dre. Uh, well, I mean, he makes a point right here actually. Where he says, but N W A ain't shit to me. Dre beating on D from Pump It Up. Step to the dog and get fucked up. <laughs> um, Whoa. Okay. <laughs> that was a line that I mean didn't fucking rhyme, but you know, it was at least something. Now, but still. But then the next line is, I'm simplistic, imperialistic, idealistic, and I'm kicking the ballistics. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's no good. I'm simplistic. <laughs> that... <laughs> yeah, why would you start with that? <laughs> and then imperialistic. Oh, okay, you know, he's a king. Uh, imperial. I'm a simple uh... king. <laughs> I'm a... <laughs> Yeah, sure. And I'm idealistic. <laughs> what, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? <laughs> like, I'm I'm really hopeful for the future <laughs> of our politics. Like, what? <laughs> See, now, with quarantine, and there's oh. a... Do you remember back in 2020? Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember? When we were speculating... <laughs> That there was going to be what we coined on the show COVID bars. Yep. That there would be a point in time where we would be able to look back at the peak of COVID mm -hmm. and a lot of people would be rapping about COVID. 
COVID comes up on this album so much. <laughs> and I it's mean, like... there's songs on the album. There's a song called Quarantine, and there's a song called Vaccine. It's like, all right. <laughs> and I was worried, though. Yeah, RC. Like, me too. And that's the thing. I was like, because <laughs> it was like, it was one of those things. Was like, are you doing this on purpose? Where you know that I'm like kind of concerned. Like, it, it, I think it's a thing where it's just at the time people are just making the references right there. But it's like now it just feels like a. Why do you keep doing that? Because it's like, because he keeps saying shit like, y'all out here fucking these bitches raw dog. Then put on a mask in fear of that Rona. It, like, it's like a. Uh, what are you? Like, I get you, you're you trying to say, oh, these guys are, you know, irresponsible when it comes to, you know, protecting their dick, but then they'll, see, again, I can't even finish this sentence without it feeling like you're saying, then they'll trust the government when it comes to that. It's like, oh, you sound like a conspiracy thing. And it's like, and I feel weird about this, right? Because I feel like in the 90s, when there was less stakes, a line like this wouldn't hit me. You know what I mean? In such a, yeah. like, because it would be that sort of X-Files, oh, you shouldn't trust the government, right? <laughs> you know? But in this day and age, it's like, Nah, it matters, and people's material lives were, like, fucked over by the spread of misinformation, so can we not do that? <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, the hindsight definitely makes some of the songs a little, eh. I'll uh, present to you uh, a couple of the quotes I have from Quarantine, and, and, and we'll see if there's substance here. Mm. Okay, well, well, okay, hold on. Hey, so, you know, it's not <laughs> NLE chopper bars, at least, you know? It's not fucking, I ain't taking that road of shit, that's bullshit! <laughs> I also realized that the thing I have quoted actually starts with a line that I'm like, I don't understand what this means. Uh, so maybe this uh, isn't the uh, best example, okay? Uh, My haberdashery has insurmountable clips. My haberdashery! <laughs> I'm so- this is the start of it. Like, like, hey, I, I think there might be a concern that he's over rapping using words that he doesn't need to use. No, no, no. Let's just check it out. My haberdashery. Okay. <laughs> As I was saying, <laughs> my haberdashery has insurmountable clips, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's what I spit with a slight urge. Imagine when I'm really motivated and re- and reveal the orchestration. I've been waiting to recite words. I thought that was cool. Slight urge, recite words, iceberg. That's a cool flow. A cool, cool rhyme scheme. It's not a bad, like, rhymes, like, rhyme scheme overall, but, like, just the way it ends, like, I've been waiting to recite words. Like, that just feels like a, is that the, okay. is that the thing you butt um bum on, you know? <laughs> I've been waiting to recite words. Reciting words, like, you know, that's not impressive, you know? Like, it, it, that's the <laughs> thing. I feel like there, the skill level is definitely there, but it's like, the showmanship in terms of like how to actually, you know, uh, land land the plane when it comes to like really making each line hit in a way that like a red man bar would hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, have you ever seen the Twitter thing where it's like describe your favorite video game as boringly as possible? Huh. I would say reciting words is probably the most boring way right. to <laughs> describe what rapping is. Yeah, reciting words. <laughs> that makes it sound so <laughs> not exciting. You mentioned it. Okay. <laughs> Look, you're already shooting holes into my argument and I don't like it. So I'm going to give you this one. I came, I came up with a backup. I'm really about action and rap is my vehicle. Put fear in the backseat. Treat negativity like a gas leak. Okay, that one's good. Every metaphor I record is a court on the court that I ran like an athlete. Yeah. Come on. No, that one's nice. That one's nice. The fucking, I treat negativity like a gas leak. Who the fuck said that? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> where's that at? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, but just like the little bit of the, uh, I, 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 well, it took me a second because I had to think about it because he said like, I record on the cord, on the court. And I was like, wait, did he say court? <laughs> no, no, no. The last one was court. That's a different word. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, hold on. Because I had to say, I was like, it counts. Does this man just say court? <laughs> yeah. You know, because like a, a, an extension cord and like a cord. I, mean, like, I hate those rhymes where it's just like, dude, I know what you yeah. mean, but come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I like those rhymes where it's like it all it's words that almost sound alike but it slips around it in a way like i like those little fun rhymes you know but when it's just o c o r d and c h o r d it's like okay but i can't hear the mm. h though <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, how did you feel about Blasphemy with old uh, King Crooked on it? Oh, man. The way this beat knocks like fucking crazy with that funky worm sample with the crazy synth. Oh, I was my like, God. I the grandma. Take it. I was like, ah. it's the funky worm. <laughs> it's funky. <laughs> I don't know how this old lady has appeared on all of these cool rappers' tracks so many times. <laughs> she gets around. She is the fucking. She, she's someone's grandma. She is the. Uh, uh, oh god, what's her name? Uh, uh, God rest her soul. Um, B. I want to say B. Arthur. That's not it. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> that, that's not right. Uh, the woman who Betsy. They kept putting her on SNL and trying to make her do old grandma funny humor. You know what I'm no. talking about. Oh, come on. She's like the internet's grandma. The internet's grandma? She, uh, she was in Lake Placid. Skyrim grandma? The grandma that used to play Skyrim? No. What? She no. was the internet's grandma. <laughs> Who is the old... Uh, when, as soon as I say this name, you're going to be ashamed. Hold up. Oh, fuck. Naked grandma! Naked, huh? Betty White! <laughs> Oh, Betty White. Uh, yeah, she I was said, in SNL. I said Betsy White. <laughs> Betsy White. Yeah. But yeah, Betty White. She was on SNL. Remember, you know how SNL, uh, you know, is always late to the party. And so in the 2010s, there was like this whole thing of like everyone loves Betty White because she says inappropriate things, and it's the you know 2010s internet, so we still like the little random. Uh, and SNL two years later was like, huh? oh, is that what people like? Oh, uh, well, then we'll have her on, you know. <laughs> and I don't know. When did that happen? And I know we're getting off topic, but yeah. <laughs> when when did it happen that Betty White became like known for that? Because I, like there were movies we'll before. Sit around, because we'll sit around and we'll watch old game shows. So I'll see Betty White showing up on Match Game, and at that point, her whole bit is that she's like an animal rights person, and. She she very rarely says like inappropriate stuff. I I, I guess that wasn't until like the two thousands. Yeah, I think it was with Lake Placid. Like I, I you know how would these things happen where it's like something happens as like the waypoint moment, but it doesn't really take effect until like about a decade later. Because like Lake Placid was the movie where she was the you know mouthy inappropriate grandma. And she was being real real rude. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I think she did some other, like, jokey things where it's like, well, now she's the old lady and it's kind of funny. To, and then it kind of, you know, rolled on from there of like, oh, now everyone's in on the joke. It, it's basically the the, the, the same uh, energy of the uh, fucking, who's that other? Chuck Norris, you know? It's like the, oh, hey, don't oh, we all God. agree about this? And this gets passed around. And, oh, yeah, we all know she's the funny old lady. And now the jokes run its course. But now all the people that are, you know, getting getting it on Facebook, you know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, hey, I get it, Betty. Betty White's like an old lady when she says, like, inappropriate stuff. It's funny. But, uh, yes, Betty White, uh, what, what, how was I wrapping this up? Oh, yes, the, the, the old lady on that song is the Betty White of hip-hop. <laughs> that, she seems I to be down with that. everybody. No, now that we've wrapped that up, let's get back to this album. Um, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the, the, oh, so Blasphemy. Like, incredible yeah. beat. But then when that second verse comes in, it, where he says, like, okay, the first lines, he's like, talking West Coast legends, ain't no way you can leave me out. Put that on my dear mama. I was chilling in a Feeney's house. Never be another Tupac for sure. But I'm from the city of Crips. Bunch of blue Pac Shakur. It's like, oh, stop it. <laughs> like, this isn't that clever. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of lost me for a second <laughs> and then I think there was another one uh, okay you know the rhymes that are like too obvious to like to the way where it's like when you hear it it's just like no you don't do that because that's just corny and it's contrived in order to do that I think one of the ones up there has got to be blasphemer and oh I hit him in the head head arm leg head and Blast femur. Like, you tried so hard to get blast femur and blast femur. Like, <laughs> like, I could hear you trying so hard to. How can I make a scenario in which blast, blast femur? Come on, I gotta make blast your femur. I've gotta make this rhyme work. Okay, I'll start by saying I'll hit you in your head, head, arm, and then an unrelated, like, random other yeah. body part, you know? <laughs> it's just so like, okay. okay. How about this? <laughs> this is a pretty long part, but, uh, but I want us to, to look through it here. 
and see if this was good because I quoted it for a reason. We'll, we'll figure it out as we go. I don't believe in Titans or mystery Greek recitings. In need of a reassessment, you leave when I reach for my pen. The Pentecostal of Penin Gospel, the new inoculum. Adjust in my flow, we can't speak just because uh, you just a capo. It's just a thought, though. What if you bitch N-words just spent as much time on your rhymes as studying Lockfo? I thought that was kind of <laughs> Yeah, that was, that, that was actually pretty good, but it yeah, came out at the end there. The fishbowl I was rowing in has <laughs> yeah, eroded nice. him, so I wrote it in the stoic grin because I won't pretend. I won't amend what is meant to be broken, mentally loathing. Lo and behold, stay afloat yeah. while you sink below him. Bestowing these stonings and throwing his life in these poems mm. and pouring his strife in these quotes, but under the knife of no one. Mm. See, th I that he was just on a fucking tear, that like, just nice. let this fucker go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and honestly, I just have that written down for the next one because there's no point in quoting signs. Because yeah. it's just him uh, and Lazarus. Yeah. Going verse for verse. Fucking and after a while, it just becomes nothing but speed rapping. Yeah, from both just of them. overclocking the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, okay, <laughs> I I went into melt banana mode. It's like there's no way I'm following this. It's impossible now. <laughs> just behold. <laughs> now, but see, I thought, uh, I thought your boy overshadowed King Crooked in Blasphemy. Mm. And I thought it was on evil footing with yeah, no, I'll, I'll agree with you on that one, actually. You know what? Actually, you're right. Yeah, yeah. And fucking Chris Webby. Yeah. He just brought fucking knock him down, down. Yeah. Oh, man. I didn't like his chorus or his verse. Not at all. Oh, my God. It was so nothing. It's so these, ooh, we got to make, it's these logic raps. It's like, you know, lyrics about how I'm the best rapper, but I don't really believe it. It's like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just placeholder Oh, we're the best because we're the best of the best or something like that. Oh, you set him up and we knock him down. It just felt so nothing. It was just like, oh, really? Are you guys the dynamic tag team duo? Really? Like, you know. You know what's funny? You mentioned logic. You reminded me about someone I'm usually that critical of. And they just happen to be on this fucking album. <laughs> Your boy Slug. Yeah. <laughs> From Amazon, like, I am usually so hard on Slug. And I thought he fucking delivered here. <laughs> well, Dan. Maybe it was Locksmith rubbing off on him. <laughs> yeah. It's a topsy turvy There's review, something people. in the air in the booth. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, what was it? Oh, it, it, it was this rhyme right here. What I think, yeah, Chris Webber. This is what I mean. We're, but the like the unsatisfying couplet ending was like, "Ayo, lock. They don't really want to go to war with these soldiers. More bold, got the soul of Thor, leaving broken sores, swinging to my shoulders. Tore shit. I guess that's what I'm saying. I'm too dope for your bullshit. A full clip. That you, <laughs> you know, it's just like a. No, uh, like you can feel the oh, I don't, I'm not, I can't give you that energy anymore because the thing that's supposed to be the boom, the su you know what I'm saying, the subject that's supposed to hit is now spilled over yeah. into the next rhyme because you clearly j yeah. just want to do that rhyme there. And and there's a, the thing is, there's a way you can make that work, but you usually kind of have yeah. to. It's that method man thing where you kind of like put in other expected rhymes beforehand, so it feels like Jules rhymes. So that when that rhyme happens, it feels like it's responding to that rhyme and that rhyme. You know what I'm saying? But this just yeah. feels like the sort of like oh. Oh, this is all I had and I, I should have made this rhyme with bullshit but I really like the rhyme of the soul of Thor so I just kind of got you know when you can hear the trying to make it work you know what I mean like you shouldn't be able to hear the motherfucker going uh and then uh, you, you should you, that's what I'm saying you shouldn't be able to see the uh plan ahead uh side you know the fucking <laughs> right <laughs> plan ahead uh, you know <laughs> Fantasy World. That one had some fucking breezy ass, nice ass production. I was like, oh, okay. That was the one with Slug <laughs> yeah. and Rebecca Noble uh, singing on the chorus. I liked that one a lot. A lot of these songs, um, it's a it's a nice mix because it's like 18 tracks, but there are some songs in here that aren't even like three minutes. Yeah. Uh, this one, very short, very tight at like just about three minutes. Yeah, I dug this one. Famous. Were you confused yes. about this one? The social commentary fell apart a little bit for me. <laughs> yeah, like, 
I have a feeling he's talking about somebody particular, right? But, it, it's but I like, don't know who. Yeah, because I'm trying to think, because it's like, okay, or maybe like an amalgamation of people, right? But I'm trying to think of what those examples could be, because the point that he's saying, like one line where he says, uh, uh, you know, because the whole point of the song is that like, you know, the types of people who, uh, well, I mean, I guess we want to give an example of Takashi 6 9 right? Like, oh, do anything for clout, mm. you know, like, oh, I'll make the video where I'm, you know, punch an old lady in the face, I don't give a fuck, <laughs> you know, like that old, you know, uh, the boonk shit, you know, you remember boonk? Anyone remember that guy? <laughs> Uh, the fucking no. oh, I, I just make Instagram videos where I do bullshit, but because rap is hot right now, well, I also, I'm also a rapper too, so it's kind of like the cross section of oh. you know shitty uh, uh, Vine videos and you know yeah, like shitty rap songs. Um, hmm. But yeah, and so like I, it's one of those things where like I want to get on board with like dissecting it, but it felt like some of the things we were saying where it was just like a but who is really doing that? Because, okay, so the line that he says is, yeah. he says, like, my self-respect does not exist. Uh, I call up my homie to vibe with. I kiss him on Instagram live, not because I'm gay or on vibe, but only because I want people to buy. And, you know, in the background here, like, buy, you know? And it's like, and, and, and then he has the line, like, I feed off of others' oppression so I can get further to serve my progression. So that line made me feel like, like at first it felt like a, oh, you know how entertainment these days, you know what I'm saying? They're always just trying to, you know, make make kids get, you know, that that's it, that little boozy energy, you know what I'm saying? Or it's just like, oh, you're going yeah, with that. Yeah. But then it feels like he's saying, oh, feeding off of others' oppression is like, oh, I'm not really gay. I'm just, you know, trying to, uh, you know, get off of the, the hype of like, you know, the Queerness is big now, so I'm trying to push that controversy. But then I'm trying to think of like, yeah, like it, Lil Nas X. Yeah, or but something. I'm like, is anyone like that? Because Lil Nas X kind of like got out of his gate. Like he didn't. Well, no, it was a. Uh, how did that happen for him? I think he like just came out, but it wasn't like a fucking for publicity. And in fact, that's the thing. It's not like oh, you know, when uh, yeah, that was the other example I was thinking of. Oh, when a uh, young thug went on the album cover with the dress. Oh yeah, we all know how uh, the uh, the next year everyone oh. was just wearing dresses, right? And they weren't just making fun of him for wearing dresses. Yeah, no one, no one in the rap game was doing that at all, right? Everyone was just trying to. Co- no, not at all. There was tons of people that were making fun of him. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to think. So I'm trying to figure out, like, what is he talking about? And then, like, kissing another rapper, I'm like, maybe Lil Wayne when he kissed Baby? But that wasn't, like, on purpose. Oh. That wasn't for publicity. That was just like a, oh, you know, we're, we're trying to imitate the mafia bosses thing. You know what I'm saying? But that got twisted. Right. In, that got twisted in the hip-hop world, especially in the, what, the 20, early 2010s, late 2000s. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we, that's an old one. Yeah, yeah. So that got twisted into the, oh, these gay rappers is trying to make her, you know what I'm saying? But, the, like, that doesn't even fucking. So, yeah, I'm not even registering what's happening. And uh, later on when he says some lines, I remember kind of like being a little funny where he says like, oh, I got a deal for some glory. Let's insult each other on both each other's stories. Go back and forth and get people to peep. And then we can both uh, eat off off fictional beef. I thought that one was funny. (laughs) He was like, yeah, it it does make you ask that question, man. When you see like, you know, one or when you see one or two, too many of these rappers in videos talk about, oh, yeah, fuck this dude up, fuck this dude up. And you're saying it in a video that you've got to know people can see like it's not, you know, it's not like this is, oh, you know, uh, uh, you can't see with it. No, we can see the account and the person this came from and where what your house looks like in the background. Like, why are you doing this? Like, you know? Yeah. Like, why would we be doing this unless it's some bullshit and they're just doing it to, you know, spark, uh, push numbers. You know what I mean? Which is totally believable in this day and age, right? You know? I'm going to guess the Christian rapper part might have been Kanye. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking. I was like, is that what he's doing? <laughs> Cuz there was that and there was also the um showing a girl my dick on Instagram live. Yeah. Like, what? Who did that? Yeah, I was like, is that Like that just feels like just trying to sell a goofy story at that point, you know? Like maybe if it had felt more like a story, I could have rocked with it being like, oh, an individual person. But yeah, with the references, it feels like he's trying to be like, oh, we all know about when that happened. Like if there was like a joke about like, oh, I'm a flex that, you know, I got the big bottles of champagne when I'm really actually getting the, you know, the two dollar ones at the, at the, you know, like how uh, the joke on the little bow wow challenge where it's like, oh, I got the big, uh, you know, uh, what the fuck is it? Cavassier bottles when it's really like like the fucking portable bottles, you know what I mean? Like, mm. <laughs> you know, but yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, they're trying to bag an IG chick and then accidentally showing my dick and 
well, I don't give a fuck. I, I did it to drive the clicks up. Well, I actually kind of like how it's portrayed that it it was an accident. Like he he didn't do it on purpose. It was like, oh fuck, I didn't mean to do that. Well, anyway, I, <laughs> it's like, oh oh, I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at my SEO and the uh, the clicks are still going up. So oh well, you know, it's that sort of eh, I still get money from it. So I don't give a shit. You know, the the dark side of the internet where it's like. You know, I mean, that Logan Paul shit, right? Where it's like, oh, you know, I did something shitty and it got me a whole bunch of clicks. And regardless of whether or not I made a, you know, apology that really fucking mattered, uh, you know, the controversy brought even more people to my videos. So <laughs> I'm just going to, you know, uh, keep right on. <laughs> like, that's the dark age we're in now, right? Where, like, if someone's an yeah. asshole and the type of people that like that asshole quality, like, they'll just keep supporting him. There isn't that fucking, you know, ending that we're uh, used to wanting to, you know, get in the end where it's like, and everyone found out that guy was an asshole and then everyone ignored him. It's like, no, if the people who like that douchebaggery want to support him, that, that can just keep happening. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, welcome to the future. Um, <laughs> yeah, Vaccine was a pretty solid track. I don't have anything written down for that one. Yeah, it, this is the one where it felt like, because because there's no hook, it, it feels the, the most where it's like, oh, he's supposed to be barring out on this one. But the rhymes are so, like, not really that hardcore. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That it's just like, it's one of those things. That it, yeah, that's the. It's like there's so much of this is just ill nothings. Where it's just like filler that sounds good flowing, but if you like thought about it for a second, it's like he's not really saying that much. You know, like it's not, and not even like on a oh rappers, you know, are just talking about how great they are. That does not really say that much. But no, I'm even like materially like is this impressive what he's saying? You know, where he's like I don't slip, I don't back down, I don't trip, I come back round. I'm already sick. I put masks down again. The <laughs> like, yeah. it was like I'm so sick. I put masks down. <laughs> it just feels like a, why are you, uh, you gotta know that there are people that are like you know saying fuck that right in our you know and they're usually conservatives. You know what I mean? Maybe <laughs> like, maybe it wasn't as widely. Yeah, you know, you know what? when everyone was isolating at the time. You know what I'm saying? He was just he he said it himself. Hey, I can make a fucking album. You know what I'm saying? And this time, and he thought, oh, no one's gonna be going after the COVID bars. Everyone's just gonna. You know, want to? <laughs> everyone's just gonna want to make you know entertainment that's gonna want to make people not think about reality. But but here's what I'm gonna right. do. <laughs> I'm gonna make it so that you can't focus on anything but the COVID. And then he released the album, and he's like, "Oh shit! All everyone's focusing on is the COVID." <laughs> Angels and demons is the next cut. Um. Oh, oh, just really quick, just this line, the the over rapping, just uh, talking about where the. Like repeating rhymes, so it, it like it's less impressive. This is what I never understood when rappers like repeat like rhymes that are pretty much the same word. So it's just like a well, I'm not giving you props for that because it's not that creative. Where it's like where he says out with the facts, or perhaps I should play along and adapt and relax. I should make a song and distract with an act in an act where they sing and I swing with an axe. It was just like what? <laughs> I, I should distract yeah. with an act in an act where I like that. That wasn't clever. <laughs> In fact, that was the exact same meaning of the word act, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Angels and Demons, yeah, yeah, yeah. Angels and Demons I thought was fine. Um, I have written down on this one, uh, how have I never heard of Locksmith before? He's fucking killing it every goddamn song. Um, and then we got John Connor, who I thought was just a watered-down locksmith. You know, okay, so I felt like... Following on this, I felt like I didn't like uh, um, Locksmith's like you know um, delivery of it, but I liked his rhymes better. But I liked John Connor's delivery better, and it felt more cohesive and straightforward. But I felt like his rhymes were lacking. Yeah, <laughs> it was so insane yeah. of an experience because I remember having that feeling. And um, and then because yeah, doesn't he end with this line that it's like feels like it's supposed to be a dope bar, but it. Kind of just doesn't hit right. He's like, the devil's works are God's blessings. Pepsi or Coke, they look the same. They both are sweet, but in the end, they don't taste the same. So choose one. And it's like, man, Pepsi and Coke are basically the same. Don't. <laughs> what are you know? Yeah, and that didn't really work for me. That that, that wasn't like a whoa. like that. Yeah, that felt like that was supposed to be like, oh snap, because Coke and Pepsi are similar. So you, you know what is the difference between God's blessings and you know the devil's? Because it's like it just feels like you're treating the difference between Pepsi and Coke as you know more pomposity than just the fucking uh, 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 you know '80s uh, marketing thing. It was, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fucking cola war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, then what else? Opinions is a pretty good uh, showcase. I like yeah. futuristic, but mm -hmm, saving mm -hmm. 
uh, how do you pronounce that? The other rapper there, oh. E K O H. Oh, e- Echo. I think it would just be Echo. Yeah. Echo. Uh, saving Echo for last was the move. Yeah. Because yeah, he fucking blew it out of the water. Yeah. Lockbuster almost fucked that up. Uh-huh. I have some more quotes from this one. I heard your I heard your sound. Were you not a fan of this one? Huh. Uh. Let me see. No, I was oh, not I, a fan I, of this I one. I thought I heard you go. Eh. No, I, I actually wasn't a fan of this one. Yeah, yeah. Try this on for size. See how this one moves you. Dun, 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 ba, yes. Dun, 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 ba. <laughs> da, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fly this up the flagpole and see who salutes. <laughs> Rap was my therapist to bear with this, to pair with the apparent shift in arrogance. Every loss was an erratic miss, but I still brought it back to apparent bliss. But I still gotta squint at the glare and glitz. Every now and then I tend to share my slips. To my unborn child, I'll never stop blacking out till I finally make your parents rich. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that one's dope. <laughs> that one was solid. And then there's the other section. I don't give a fuck about none of you nagging N-words, you negative. But you rather be rapping average and never competitive. You would rather... In, okay. Okay. <laughs> never mind. You, would, <laughs> you sound like an ESL like, student trying to get uh, through this. <laughs> like, uh. You would rather inhabit habits and have it repetitive than establish a standard that we could actually relish in. Besides inhabit habits. Inhabit ha- yeah, it's that thing. It's that <laughs> thing. You know what I'm talking... It's that sort of like... No, it's... Yeah, th- we're getting to the crux of it. Uh, it's not that he's not lyrical in certain pockets where it's like it. really dope, but it's those little things where it's just like, he feels like that's clever and that's so not clever, you know? Where it's just like, why do you think that... I heard that and you thought that was clever, but you think just using the same word is clever? Like, and he does that so many times, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I overlooked that. I wouldn't have quoted that if I remember you I, said Nabbit Habits. And, and then uh, I think, like, the way he ends a lot of verses, you know how Eminem, for as much as he overraps, when you listen to, like, how he feeds into the hook, it always feels like, okay, no matter how, you know, Tasmanian Devil he went, he brought it back so that we can get to the hook. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's always a good feeder into it. And it feels like there's there's not for this, and there there isn't really the the consideration of how people are really hearing how things are going to hit when it comes to the end. Because like, I think, uh yeah, isn't this how the verse ends? He goes like, I know that they pray for a hitch. They set the bar and I'm breaking that bitch. They lock the door, I'm a break in that bitch. And, and then post what I know till I take what I miss. And it's like, did you like just off that? Did you know what that means? Like, did you register what he was saying when, it, when he said that post what I know till I take what I miss? Huh? Wait, I'm going to post everything I know until I take what I mi- wait. What? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, how is that? What did, what did you mean when you said that? <laughs> and again, it's one of those things where like, it just feels like he's like breaking that bit, stood it about it to take what I miss. And it's like, it's more focused on, the sound of that be- you know what i'm saying then actually wait what are you actually yeah. saying <laughs> yeah i don't know why but there weren't lyrics for the check-in on yeah Genius. what the fuck was that about it was like who are these lazy assholes who are like all right one song left and uh track 11 out of 18 which for some reason i skipped and i don't know what did you have a fucking heart attack before you did that one <laughs> yeah i have no idea what the point of that was I thought Black Holocaust was a, was a solid cut, yep, very yep. short. Oh my but... god, that one was crazy. Whew. The points that he brings up were so like Black Lives Matter, but what happened to Black Power? You know what I'm saying? The the active like, you know what I'm saying? Because there is that thing where you notice where it's like, oh, talking about black bodies. That's a lot in a lot of you know good meaning like liberal writing stuff where it's like, oh yes, black bodies, da da da. But it's not really about black agency. You know what I'm saying? And so. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I like that he that he calls that out. Um, and then what else? Oh, my God. <laughs> Trump versus Biden. <laughs> I was so nervous going into this one. And I was wor- I was nervous because what we eventually kind of got was somewhere between an Immortal Technique song from the early 2000s. Yeah. And and your boy, your shit, Who? fucking epic rap battles of history. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's okay. I, um, I I thought I thought it did pretty. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, I I liked I liked how they 
Well, okay, here's the thing, it, right? It probably is a, you had to be there for a, a lot of these references now, though, yeah. <laughs> well, kind of, but what he's trying to do here is show you that both Trump and Biden have shitty things about them. Sure, yeah, yeah. But what's funny is they wouldn't do this. Right. Do you, do you understand? Yeah, I get like, what you're trying to say. During a debate, Trump <laughs> wouldn't bring up all the shitty things Biden did because they're things he would also do. What? Yeah, I mean... Like, it's just hmm. basically pointing out that Biden is way more conservative-leaning yeah. than he likes to admit. Right. But a conservative saying that isn't a diss. So, so I got, this is how it comes out. Like, the song is clearly written from the perspective of, you know, uh, a more leftist person critiquing Biden as well as Trump. But yeah, the problem becomes... Where it's like, would Trump say that? But at the same time, I do remember there were moments where Biden, I mean, Trump would do stuff like, oh, well, what about, uh, you know, um, you know, you guys, the Democrats ran Hillary and, you know, uh, 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 Bill Clinton cheated on his wife with a whole bunch of women. And I'm going to bring them all up on the trial on the day of the, uh, you know, on the day of, <laughs> right before the election. You know, so he did do stuff like that. Right. Where it's like bring up stuff that, you know, he doesn't actually cares about, but it's just cheap points. So, like, that's where I was kind of thinking about it, where it was like, but he was just doing it like to an even more exaggerated degree. Of course, using points that he wouldn't actually bring up, but would actually probably help him out if he brought him up, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but um, I liked how he started talking like Trump, but that like yeah. faded away very quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's like how like, how much can you keep that up? <laughs> if he was gonna do that the whole verse, I don't even know if I'd be able to hang yeah. with it. But <laughs> it, it kind of faded away, and he got me with the fucking fake out because I forgot ah. so much about the 2020 election ah. that he's fucking doing this thing where he's like, "Hey, folks." Yeah. Oh, he's doing the Charlemagne the God huh? voice. <laughs> oh God, yes, yeah, Charlemagne's the fucking. Uh, How twenty twenty? He's the moderator. Yeah. Um, and he's like, "Hey, man, neither of these candidates are perfect, huh? But who are you gonna choose? You're gonna vote for Biden or Trump? Well, folks, hope we'll hope you make it out there. And hold up a second. <laughs> <laughs> who is that? Kanye West. Oh. I'm like. Oh, uh, god damn it, that's row. right. <laughs> Fucking hell. So then you got the goddamn uh, Kanye verse. <laughs> It's it's fucking yeah, and that that was pretty funny. <laughs> the way it just kept going was like, oh my god. <laughs> um, and how you could just like feel everybody just like looking disappointedly <laughs> over like, oh, oh man. Mm. This is the world we're living in, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah, uh, there was that one line. It's like, again, it's like the... <laughs> it's making a point, but, like, it's just where he says, uh, you state you want to save America. I continue. I don't do much for blacks, but at least I don't pretend to. <laughs> like... Yeah. You know, now, now here's here's where I, I get your point. He would never admit that. He wouldn't admit that he doesn't do much black. Right. He would say, "No, yeah. they love me." You know what I mean? Like I, I did. I met with Ice Cube, so that's like doing something for black people. You know? <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He is not. Uh, he's not intelligent enough to be able to thread that type of needle. Yeah. <laughs> I think Second Amendment was mm. a fucking stellar track. Definitely. On the subject of just kind of us living in constant oh. uncertainty about when the next is going to happen, like when the next mass shooting is going to happen, yeah. and what the circumstances are, and it kind of touches on some examples. Yeah, I mean, the, that. the first verse is in the school, the second verse is in a, a church, so it's kind of like the, oh, right, these are the... You know, these specific places that we were supposed to be considered, you know, somewhat hollowed and respectable places, you know, like, hey, that's where kids are. You don't fuck with kids. You know what I mean? Hey, that's where, you know, uh, good, you know, old people are. You know what I mean? Like, don't fuck with old people in the church, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's no good. Um, But yeah, I mean, this shit's been happening, right? The Christ church shooting and all this type of shit. You know what I mean? And yep. now there was a level of me that did feel a little like overwhelmed and exhausted by the second verse where it's just kind of like like i get that you're doing the well we have to do the two scenarios and then the third verse where we have the lesson you know but it's just like by the time 
we got through the middle of the second verse, I was just kind of like a, okay, I fucking get it, man. <laughs> like the imagery yeah, is like, that's oh, true. as as the ten year old was shot in half, crying and crawling to his mother, like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> like I didn't need this detail to empathize with the story, you know. <laughs> that is a good point. <laughs> um, but yeah, when when he gets to the end and he really like really lays into the point where he's like if the shooter's white we weep and we wonder what the where the parents is if it's an arab the lab, they label the perpetrator a terrorist how are you unaware of this where the caution's geared uh, media pundits publicly benefit from fear and um didn't he say at one point where he's like cnn and fox news are are basically the two sides of the same coin i was like oh shit like he's like yeah he's taking a little too yeah, deep right like- here <laughs> CNN is just as bad as Fox News or something like that. It's like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, damn. I hate, I hate that we're at this point where I see their point. <laughs> like, yeah, um, fuck. And then, um, oh, and the way he ends it, like, we paint ourselves in the corner and limit the truth. Is this an epidemic or chickens coming to roost? It's like, ooh, Oof. gotta hit him with that Malcolm X quote. <laughs> And then we get Pull Me Out the Water. Really solid instrumental. That hook sample was fucking money. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I was like, holy shit. I fucking had to make note of the instrumental, too. That was really great. I loved the vibe. And, but then another one of these lines. Evangelist. Uh, e- e- well, it's like, again, l- just hear this line. E- e- evangelist push prosperity gospel to proper off sloth co- cloth mask cover over my nostrils. And it's just like. Yeah. I don't and like again. He's, he's not saying anything directly, but it's just like, why are you bringing? <laughs> like, unless you're trying to say something. That's the thing. Yeah, it's like he's not saying it to make any point. It just feels like a. And by the way, here's what's happening at the moment. You know what I mean? So it just feels like a. Why are you saying this? <laughs> every time, yeah. Every time the COVID bars would come, it would feel like just ambiguous. Where it was just like it didn't feel like it was. It didn't even feel like it was doing the thing of just, hey, you know, now, oh, look how things have changed. Everyone's got to like, it didn't even look like it was doing the, oh, look at the times. It just felt like it was just passively saying it randomly. You know what I mean? In a way that was just like, why are you saying, oh, is that why I didn't have the lyric here? Yeah, this song is randomly not on Genius. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, one of them was missing. I forgot. Yeah, Pull Me Out the Water, the song that sounds the most like a single, honestly. (laughs) <laughs> wasn't on genius and i was like what is happening <laughs> so, oh, i was just saying next track was good though <laughs> oh yeah uh, from a distance was great and the song chorus by uh martin luther mccoy Ooh. i thought uh pushed it over the top yeah for sure. yeah yeah oh man and the verses oh my god i was just remember what it's specifically about again he's giving you the intricacy of detail where it's like about this kid you know he signs up to war because uh you know i just wanted to make i thought i was making the country better and like he says uh it's like at least that's what they told me when i signed up provide us with a step on the social ladder to climb up money for college and a job in the sciences a brand new career with a house full of appliances what i'm implying is i've been trying to improve our situation and lift us out this lion's den i was hard pressed i figured i could better my family and serve our country in the process and then by the time you get to the end where he's like they force poor people to fight and put out fires that they start won't take part but give orders shipped home overnight across 50 Fictional borders, and they ain't got a draft no more. We volunteer uh, classism is the draft, and we on the bottom tier. And I don't see none of the, their kids in the crosshairs. Look across here, all of us starving for our share. And this is no plea, no pitch for sympathy. This is me warning you if you should ever mimic me, and if I ever make it back, there's no telling when I'm inhaling the chemicals and how they react. If your pop pop was here and he testified, the Gulf War, we sprayed our own troops with pesticides. It's just like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> Yeah, just, Jesus Christ! Like you just fucking need a. You just fucking catching your breath, just like, oh god! It's like, oh, and more truth bombs, oh, more cold hard truth, oh. Jeez. so many hard pills to swallow. Yeah, oh, I'm choking. <laughs> One at a time. <laughs> and I thought, hold on, was a strong as hell outro yeah, cut. Yeah, it really tied the whole album together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, like the dude's rug, for sure. <laughs> Man, I don't... I'm conflicted right now, RC. I remember when you was conflicted. <laughs> right now, in fact. I, uh... I originally gave this album a five, I RC. Five mm. But you're making me second guess it now. And, you know, honestly, you're you're making me uh, give my rating a little, a little bit of a... Because <laughs> I, I, as I'm looking back over it, I was like... 
man, that was a little too harsh on your boy. You know, because the bad lyrics, they just stick out like sore thumbs so much. But I can't act like the lyricism that you were, you were pointing out to me wasn't there, right? You know, it's just that it's just it just felt like a thing where it's like he was so marveled at his ability to put words together. And then he just didn't think about those little parts where it's just like, is it that clever to just use the same word again? You know, <laughs> and it's like, oh, but they're not going to use the same word the way I use the same word, you know? It definitely does come down to sometimes how just impressed I am with the ability to just fucking flow right. and still maintain the ability to keep in the fucking multis and the in Right, because that shit ain't easy. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So it, it really does just come down to like... Enjoyability. It's super impressive that he's doing it. Enjoyability. And he sounds good doing it. Yeah. So even if it's not necessarily saying anything... I won't really criticize it too much. Because enjoyability. You enjoyed the the way it all came together. It doesn't fucking matter if he was saying nothing. Yeah, it was like, yeah, we didn't understand what the fuck was happening on that Japanese, you know, rock glitch uh, no, LP. Oh, God, no. But uh, we enjoyed ourselves, enjoyed ourselves, enjoyed. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Hit that Jackson's uh, sample. <laughs> so maybe we can meet uh, somewhere in the middle. What uh, what rating did you originally give it? I originally was giving it because I had it at 3.722. And I was like, ooh. Oh, okay. That... That that means round it down to three point five, but uh, seven two. But you only need seven five for it to be that rate. You know what I'm saying? For you to pull it up and oh, is it that bad? Where you know he ha- has he not been doing enough where he earns it? You know what I mean? <laughs> I try not to disagree with you on ratings because you know to each our own. But yeah, if you would have given this a three and a half, I probably would have fought you. Yeah, so I got to give this a four at the very least. Yeah, I can't deny the man's talent. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to say a four and a half. Mm. <laughs> I, I'll also concede uh, half a point for me. This is how our podcast works, folks, I guess. <laughs> I think that brings it to the end of this week's episode. And I want to thank you very, very much for spending your time with us this week and listening to our silly thoughts and opinions and our complete inability to stay on a single topic for more than five minutes. But that's why you're here, and that's why we're here. And uh, that's why you enjoy the show. At least I hope so. But if there is an album that you would like to hear us talk about on a future episode, as a little reminder, you got to head over to our Kofi. It is ko-fi.com slash going off. G L I N O F F. I'm so scared. I'm so, I can't. It's like every the, time it's the like, anticipation. Um, I'm playing with a fucking jack in the box. You never fucking know. I'm playing Russian roulette with slash. Dude, that actually sounds pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it's not bad. Like the the guitarist way. Oh, oh, wait a second. I was thinking. Is that slang for something? What? Like pussy? What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, I think, I've heard people say like gash as a term. I've heard gas for, I've heard gas I've never for heard sure. slash. <laughs> I think it's because, I think in the public imagination, slash has like so definitively taken that word, you know? Because I don't really hear people talk about like, you know, because slash does mean to cut someone. And I feel like our brains have kind of like not affiliated. We've unhooked slash from that word now because you know what I mean? It's such a thing that, no, that's what the guitarist is called, you know? <laughs> well, I'm looking on urban dictionary, not exactly the most reliable source, but here are some uh, definitions for the word. Okay. Mm. Famous guitarist whose major bands include Guns N' Roses, Snake Pit, and Velvet Revolver. So, there's that. Um, action of cutting or slitting. So, there's that. Genre of fan fiction. There is that. Uh, involving <laughs> <Right. pairings laughs> this whole of... time, we were just not thinking about that. <laughs> no, I completely forgot about that. There is that. The other very um, popular one that keeps coming up. To take a piss to urinate, primarily used by men. Example, 
Mate, can you pull over? I need yeah. to take a slash. Yeah, that does sound British. As soon as you said, mate, <laughs> I need to pick a quick slash. Because I guess, like, you know, a urine stream does look like a <laughs> cut or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, I suppose. But I, I, I think I've heard Drake say, you know, he's like, oh, she even let me slash on the tour bus or something like that. Like, yeah, like as a different word for like I always smash. thought it was smash on the tour bus. Yeah. Is it? Hmm. 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 It does say slash uh, to have sex with is another one. Yeah, yeah. What, what so who fucking song? knows? What is that song again? <laughs> what is the what is the slash? That could be any oh, fucking Drake uh, song, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for, for oh, God damn it, I hate it when that happens. When it's like not one of his songs, it's like a DJ Khaled song that he's on. It's just like, God damn it, I was never going to oh, find that. was that it? <laughs> yeah, for free. You know, would you fuck me oh. for free? <laughs> That's right. I love, I love a line like that. Would you fuck me for free? Like, you know, if you have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Oh, uh, where slash? were yeah, he we? Said, even let me slash on the tour buzz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you want to request Drake or DJ Khaled <laughs> oh, <God>. for any reason, <laughs> I'm sure there's something by Drake we haven't reviewed on this show by now. Uh, Head on over, maybe that really early one from like 2009. Oh, yeah. Thank him later. We haven't done that one. Mm. This possibility is an options is all I'm saying here, mm. folks. There's plenty of, sto of stones left unturned. Mm, the imagination runs wild. <laughs> Oh, yes. Don't let us limit the possibilities here, please. Nothing is off the table. Kofi.com, ko-fi.com slash going off pod. Whoa, Jesus Christ. What <laughs> the hell was I even out? doing there? <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous <laughs> that you were going to say slash. I wanted to say it so fast just to be done with it. You know, we might, we might as well just do it now. <laughs> ko dash fi.com mm -hmm. slash. <laughs> Going off. That's G O I N O F F. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do every time. I'm going to start imitating guitar slash guitar solos. <laughs> oh, shit. There are no vampires. <laughs> Where do we go now? <laughs> Where do we go? <laughs> You used to say that on the show. There used to be a fucking transition on this goddamn podcast. Is, RC, where, where do we go from the fucking... Where do we go from here? We we get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. I was just thinking about fucking suck a dick earlier this morning. Oh. Not thinking about doing it. And thinking about how we used to end the goddamn show right. in the most insulting way possible. Take him back to the essence. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know what, maybe we should be more fair. Eat a pussy. <laughs> hey, Annie, you know, why are we going to limit, again, limit your choices, yeah. limit your options? That's not what we do. We, we need to do, like, at the end of, uh, what was uh Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood, where he's like, uh, so suck dick, lick pussy, and eat ass. <laughs> well, why did we ever use that? <laughs> Why That's do we ever stop? <laughs> <laughs> we got all our information in the in the description. Anyway, we got our link trees, so you can follow our YouTube's, our Patreons, our individual Kofi's. That's right. Um, uh, you boy. Pretty much rocking almost exclusively on Patreon at this point, though, since uh, Fan House isn't a thing anymore. Damn. Uh, Patreon.com slash Muse and Patreon.com slash Rap Critic, correct? That's right. Uh, I'm doing a goal where if I get to 500, I'll be streaming all of Buster Rhymes albums. And I'm trying to do like an incremental thing. If we get to like different levels, I'll do different albums. And then if we get to like the top two before a thousand, you know, uh, Lord willing, you know, try to be optimistic. Uh, then we'll put it to a Patreon vote. So there's a whole bunch of fun, sexy stuff for you to do. Join the Discord and get it to act like you want it. As well as, yeah, my personal Kofi for if you want to request uh, stuff for me to live stream. Uh, uh, either albums or or songs at the end of the streams and stuff like that. So, uh, as well as like movies for the review of new podcast. Yeah, I got to remember all the shit that I'm doing and <laughs> remember to actually tell people Damn. about it. Uh, <laughs> so get with it, act like you want it. <laughs> we got twittercom slash riffcoms for updates on the riffcoms YouTube page that includes the podcasts and everything. And I've also got my own personal Twitter now. So if you aren't following 
at Moth Muse. Make sure to be following that. That's where I'm posting all my like personal tweets and uh, pictures and all that fun, sexy stuff. So if you don't want to be left out of the loop, I uh, think I messed up the old Twitter and a lot of people got blocked and they shouldn't have. And if you're a fan and you've been wanting to follow for a while and I didn't know you were blocked, uh, you're not blocked anymore on the new one. So follow the new one. Yeah. <laughs> that happens a lot. We'll let innocent people just get hit in the crossfire and you never know. So Fucking Twitter, man. We're starting with a very clean slate. I don't have anybody but maybe two people blocked on the new Twitter. So it really is the Wild West mm. out here. But until next time, for Going Off, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic. And wait, I've got an idea. Call a locksmith. Call a locksmith. Call a locksmith. Eh? You like that? Robin Hood, Ben and Tights reference? Because oh, his, his oh. name's Locksmith. I... <laughs> oh, I'm very clever. I thought someone was stuck in their cat. And I, th- I thought someone was stuck in their... Uh... In their chastity cage. <laughs> Indeed. <coughs> 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 <coughs>